But there's another lesson that comes out of I mean, the, 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 the writings of the last few years, and that is, and I'm sure many of you in this audience have read this book, which is now having a big part of the debate, influencing a big part of the debate about which way the Labour Party should turn under its new leader. And that is, of course, the spirit level. There were two statisticians uh, looking in detail at the 20 two largest Western economies and more briefly at the whole of the global economies and coming to the conclusion that economic success really does um, is determined by the level of investment but that those nations that are most successful are those that share the wealth best within and they've got a whole series of charts which show whether it's a teenage pregnancy, drug abuse, homelessness all the indices that determine whether yours is a good or bad society to live in and you've got the US up at the top, and then there's Portugal, and then there's UK. And down at the other end of the charts, the good area, you've got the Netherlands, and you've got Finland and Sweden. Now, most of us on the left don't find this a surprising discovery, that countries with redistributed tax systems have less casualties. But there's the one chart that puts all the nations of the world on it, and it's linked to life expectancy. And the nation that is the most effective in redistributing its wealth and guaranteeing the best quality of life for its citizens, although it's been done under the most relentless pressure, is Cuba. And that is after a hard assassination, after all the military interventions, all the attempted assassinations, they've managed to achieve that. Think what they could have done as a beacon to the rest of the world if they hadn't had to cope with all that um, huge economic dislocation that came from that. And that's the lesson we need to drive forward. So I just want to say, you know, one of the reasons I, well, many reasons for regretting losing the last mayor election, but one that particularly hurt, was that I said that from the um, end of 2008, we would start to celebrate with a festival all of the 202 nations that would come to London for the Olympic Games. And I intended that programme should start early in 2009, so that Cuba, which would be the first nation whose culture and history we would celebrate in this city, we would tie it into the 50th anniversary of the revolution. Now, oddly enough, Boris cancelled this. <laughs> and, I mean, because he, I, I, I don't think he, he, he didn't look down the list beyond Cuba, so he cancelled the whole puppy lot. So, I mean... But, I mean, I, I know it's, it's a sort of, it's, it's slightly awkward, but I do hope that if I get re-elected in 2012, we'll reinstate that programme, not to celebrate all the nations, because the Olympics will be only ten weeks away, but I do actually think it's time that in this country, and in this city, we help educate and help people understand by actually celebrating what Cuba has achieved over half a century. And I give that commitment. We will celebrate Cuba. and make certain that for this city in London we continue to celebrate the contribution that the peoples of Latin America have made in turning it from a rather dowdy place that was a little bit quiet and a little bit dull into just about the greatest city on earth. Thank you very much. Everybody.